I'm not sure if you can dance all summer or not, you know, so that's uh, always a, you know, when you, when you stop for a few months and then you start again, your body is, it's really not like getting on a bicycle, <laughs> you know what I mean? The body is like, what are you doing to me, <laughs> right? So for the second position, uh, we're taking a gorgeous breath to the right and we're looking over to stay right. And we didn't do any wrong plays earlier, did we? Guess what? We're going to do a wrong play in second in the center of the room. And we're going to just stretch that one foot. Yeah. I'm going to do a wrong play in first position. All the way down, look at ladies. On, Demi, and stretch. Then we're going to come into fifth position. We're going to do a double peg bar height to the side. We're going to do a double peg bar height in second air of vets. Come down to the tendu pose, square everything off, open up to the left. Yeah, bring the arms down, take our breath, and do that on the other side. Okay, second, well played first. Fifth position, we double play front, we double play side, and we double play second. In the school, um, you know, most of the kids that come, begin when they're young and there's a progression right up through the levels. So they, you know, they can come, they can be with their friends. They take level, they take, you know, our preschool classes. And then at the age of eight, they can go into our graded syllabus classes. And that goes all the way up through level four. That means they're probably around uh, 12 by the time that they get out of level four. When that, um, when they do that, there's a split in the school. Mm -hmm. So we have what we call our intermediate levels and we have what we call our, our teen program, or our recreational levels. It works out really well for the students that do sports, do theater, have other things that they love to do, but they've always come here and danced. Our kids that are a little bit older that want to begin to dance. So it's a really wonderful component of the school. The, the, other, the intermediate levels are where they now begin point work, um, there are requirements for the number of classes that they're taking every week. Um, and we encourage, there are certain prerequisites. So we have a very large modern program here and you have to be in the upper levels and the intermediate levels in order to do that because it requires a certain amount of technique and the ballet classes are what give you your technique. Uh, right. So we have the two components to the school and I, I've always, I'll be honest with you, I feel like it's one of the great things that this school offers. You know, there's, there's something here for everybody. We have kids that train at a pre-professional level and get into really wonderful uh, dance programs mm -hmm. uh, in college. Uh, we have a few that have gone on to dance professionally, but that's a, that's a very small number. Right. Um, but you know, for the, for the kids that want to come and just love to dance, we, we have a lot of options here. Please, 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 stretch, please, yeah, yeah, five, six, 
One of the levels that I don't, I don't teach all of the levels like I used to, but one of the levels that I still do teach is my level three class. Um, that's my 10 year olds. And what we do um, in that level every year is that we get notebooks, we make a ballet notebook, and I am a stickler for them learning the correct terminology. I've met dancers over my life who are phenomenal dancers and did not have a real clear understanding of the terminology, which I think is so important. So yes, we, we really do. Um, I think it's a, an important part of what they learn. So, you know, the school, Ballet Arts Center, I think, is known um, for being a fairly traditional and structured school. Um, you know, we do everything. We, we don't just do ballet, but um, I have always believed that it should be taught the way that it was intended to be. In the school, um, you know, most of the kids that come begin when they're young and there's a progression right up through the levels. So they, you know, they can come, they can be with their friends, they take level, they take, you know, our preschool classes. And then at the age of eight, they can go into our graded syllabus classes. And that goes all the way up through level four. That means they're probably around uh, 12 by the time that they get out of level four. So we have what we call our intermediate levels and we have what we call our, our teen program, or our recreational levels. You know, works out really well for the students that do sports, do theater, have other things that they love to do, but they've always come here and dance. Um, there are requirements for the number of classes that they're taking every week. Um, and we encourage, there are certain prerequisites. For the kids that want to come and just love to dance, we, we have a lot of options here. This world now, yes. you need to know how to uh, be a contemporary dancer. So what we do is we try to bring in teachers who um, do types of dancing that they don't ever do. We offer hip hop uh, in sessions throughout the year, but the, you know, the kids here don't do a lot of that. So we bring in uh, hip hop people for them. Lots of different you know, people come in. It's interesting because years ago, we always encourage ballet. So at the younger levels, they can come here and not take ballet. They can just do tap or jazz or, or whatever, but we encourage it and, and they won't be able to do everything as they get older unless they're taking the ballet. But jazz was what everyone wanted to do. Every kid here used to want to do jazz. And now even jazz and tap have started to take a little bit of a background to modern and contemporary dance. Um, and as a professional dancer, you know, you cannot, you know, yes, the, the classical training is going to give you, again, the technique that you need for everything but you've got to be able to do it all. And, and right. you're right, you're right. New York City Ballet, Boston Ballet, they're all um, becoming much more contemporary in what they present and what they, um, what they train with.
The main performance for the entire school is like most schools. We do a recital. We call it our spring performance in um, usually in early May. I think we've come to be known for doing some quite spectacular productions. Um, usually our recitals consist of a, a short ballet. And then the second half of the show is more of the contemporary stuff. Um, so we get together, we decide what the theme will be. We decide who's going to be doing what. Teachers come to me with music. I have a most phenomenal, I have been very blessed over the years to have a faculty here that is really I don't think there's anyone around here who can say they've got the teachers that I've got. So I trust what they do. You know, certainly I, you know, we go in and tweak along the way, but um, every one of them is is so capable and so talented that, um, you know, we work as a team and it all comes together. <laughs> Another big part of the of what takes so much time um, over the you know at one time I taught everything here as, um, and then as time went on I taught more of the younger levels I've put together from all of the you know I've done a lot of workshops and teachers um, seminars is really where I've put most of my time and energy into in the last 25 years. So taking from all of that, I've put a syllabus together for our preschool up through about level four. Um, we work together on the ballet syllabus here. Um, so for the younger classes, I would say, you know, it doesn't matter what teacher you get here, your child is gonna have a very similar class and learn very similar things. As they get older, the teachers begin to bring more of their own style into it, but we all know what the goals are. And when we were talking before about the different schools of ballet, we all tend to be a bit more Vaganova, which is the Russian school. Um, some teachers are more trained in it, others not so much, but we, yes, we have lots and lots of meetings uh, about you know how we need to teach things so that there's consistency for the younger kids it's you know it's about trying to give them you know certainly the best dance training that we can but they've got to have fun and you know it it has to be fun and we so we we work really hard at trying to do both
there's so many different levels in the room, you know. I have you, you guys that have been working on double pirouettes on point, right, uh, all last year, to some of you that haven't, I don't think are, have been working on pirouettes yet, right? So I think we're gonna jump and think about that for a minute. So everybody go, come into first position. And I really, really simply wanna see 16 uh, jumps in, in uh, first position. And then we're gonna open up to second position you know, we'll catch our breath, 16 jumps in second position. Then we'll put our right foot front and we'll do 16 changements, okay? Just to warm up our feet for jumping. It's been a tough year for everybody. Um, so, and we certainly, you know, the arts I think took a real big hit in this one. Um, so we had to pivot to virtual classes very quickly. Uh, we learned how to do that um, very quickly. Um, and we opted, unlike a lot of other schools, we opted to stay um, virtual for most of last year. We, we've been back live for probably about, since about the end of February when we phased the school back in. Um, but because of that, you know, the, the virtual component is just, you know, with kids doing it all day long in school, it just wasn't something that a lot of parents felt that their child could stay with, which is understandable. Mm -hmm. So the school, you know, the school has suffered a loss in that. Um, so we're, you know, pulling up our bootstraps and we're, we're plugging on and we're, you know, we've got uh, more offerings over the summer than usual. Uh, we're going into the fall with plans to do some sort of nutcracker. It may look a little bit different than what we typically do, but it will be a great performance experience um, regardless. And uh, we're gonna just, you know, keep doing what we're doing. Um, I was able to keep all of the teachers on faculty here for the year. And that was a, that was, you know, a great, that was one of my goals. And, and it was a great um, bo boost for everybody to, you know, be able to, to still be here. So they're all coming back and we're, we're moving forward. So a reverence is, is the way that dancers um, finish each class. It's a thank you to the teacher. It's a thank you in the old days when there were pianists in the class, they would um, you know, gesture to the pianist as well. Um, and it's also a tradition, which they won't do tonight, but it's always a, been a tradition in a ballet class that the students applaud at the end of the class um, for the teacher and for the, the people that have, have contributed to the class. Thank you. 